Today is the 16th of September 2012 and we're commemorating Owen Glyndwr in Pontridawi as part of our resistance campaign against the Renewables Robber Barons. When Glyndwr began his revolt on the 16th of September 1400, there were, the main reasons for it was a 200 years of conquest and 100 years of colonisation which was demoralising as well as keeping them down and exploiting and tyrannising them. Throughout the 14th century there was constant revolts, there was constant activity by bandits and thieves called the Adera Grind, the birds of the wood, mercenaries and all lot. In the years of the plague, famine, everything. There was numerous uprising. So well in Bren, in Rutherland, and here's the key thing, with the Welsh go to the local market, run by the inlet, controlled by the inlet, obviously to sell their goods, they were stopped, and there was a riot. This happened also in Dumares. This thing about stopping the Welsh. The Welsh could grow wheat, but they could not mill it, and they could not grind it. It was an English miller, an English baker, who could do that and sell it. That really got the Welsh in there. So when Glyndwr's war started, amongst the first target, where they wind and water mills and the smashing of grind, grinding stuff. That was part of their economic warfare. Now the important thing to remember about the Glyndor Revolt is by 1400 the land was rife with them. Right? With the, the Glerwyr going around the taverns, and the bards going from the big houses, talking of the Mabgarogan. Mercenaries are coming home from France. How old were they the future? His brother came home. There was another mercenary that came home from the Crusades. They were all circling back. They knew something was going to happen. It was going, the bubble was going to burst. And it did. And the interesting thing is that when it did burst, it was by an handful of people. Now, at the time, Lindu Rosa, the supporters probably the time got to take it out, was about two dozen men. By the time they started burning the town on the Great Raid around, into Shropshire and then to the Rugby, laden down with so much booty that the English caught up to them and they had an evening to get an egg for the mountain. Wales at this time had a population of 550,000. England had a population of 3 million. Not only that, England had a military machine, the equivalent of America going to Vietnam and the British conquering half the world in the United You don't realise how much effort has got to go into making swords and how many blacksmiths you've got to have to do it. Wales didn't have that sort of technology. They had handed down swords. They picked them up on the battlefields and all this. But when the revolt started, boy did it take off. Unlike any other Welsh war, this was a national revolt. And it spread across Wales in six months. And the reason for that is the resentment of the underclass, the lower class, the peasants, the bondmen, the tenants. And you can see with Lindo's strategy to his mother's land to get the tenants, to the mid Wales to get Mortimer's tenants, tenants, and the bond people. He had an army in waiting, a large year peasant army, there can be no doubt about that. There weren't all that many of the hell left in Wales, except lower ones. So it spread and it burst. And the reason it kept going, 21 years, the last Welshman rebel to be had was Robert Updo in Welshman Castle. 1422, but it is surrender when they in 1422. So to keep a war going for that time, with population now, then it must have been most impressive. You know, we haven't got a big country full of dear hell here. And the important thing is, yes, we might have lost the war, but we started to win the peace. Because so many settlers had fled, the Norman lords with the rich lands in Denby and the Rear de Morgan had to employ the Welsh they chased out about 100, 200 years before. The other important, very important thing, there was no serfdom left. Wales didn't have a serf, a, a, a peasant revolt, there was still serf. At the start of the Glyndwr revolt, Lord Grey had 184 serfs. At the end of the revolt, he had eight. So calculate how many serfs are going away and bond people. Calculate it. And after the war, no serfdom, no bondage, the people mostly have become gone to the hills like the Red Bandit. And the Red Bandit, there's a lot of black propaganda about them by the Tundra that they get to eat and everything. Oh, they occupy the old Valley, they lived on the margins and they farm. You know, they struck, yes, a 
English travellers and judges and people like that were forcing it. Roland Lee was carrying out a terrorist war against these people, the hundreds of them. So these people started occupying the market and tying an horse of being built in the common and the unwanted land. These people are the descendants of what becomes the people of the pitchfork. Kumud Kayo, which the way they're going to put this country around their army next week, that is that, but Griffith and Gwentian hid out as outdoors before they started the revolt. Had bond slave. That's well slave. The Welsh have got to keep the serfs as well, you know. And they had a bond slave population there. By the 16th century, because of the Grindon revolt, they'd started taking the deals and taking the land back. In the 16th century, the Matildas are around and they're evil. They, they were the ones who gave all this land to the English aristocratic traders. Um, thanks so much for being Welsh. But in Kumat Kayo, by the 16th century, when they started the enclosure movement, and the Lords tried to take it off these people, they rose up. And you had the slogan, Treklad Nagarglut, which Keri Hardy was going to use in the Merthyr election. So the, and we, are, we are the descendants of these people, I'm sure all of us. My grandfather died in a coma. You know, we all got this link with the past. We walked back into history. Now, I will have a, you know what I'm like, I'll slag anybody off and criticise anybody and I'm like, in all of it. No. <laughs> I don't believe that. I'm hardening people. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. But part of the reason I don't go on about the Labour Party and all the rest, they're all tiny traitors, the lot of them. But quite Cymru, they collaborated with this. And at that conference yesterday, all that Leanne was like a car saleswoman, you know? And she's like it. What she's putting forward is Obama's Green Deal. Right, what Obama did. And because Obama threw all his money in around America, you know, the likes of mighty corporations like Dukes, Peabody, and all the rest of them grabbing it, suddenly going green. These are people that have muddied up Indian land where they've been waste and they're toxic or something, got nuclear power, suddenly they're green. Because Obama has given money. She quotes Roosevelt. Roosevelt's new deal was about heavy construction, dams, roads, factories. Not Green's policies, you know. He even fought the Wobblies in the Tennessee Valley when the Wobblies tried to organise the workout. So she's lying and misusing the truth. But what really absolutely got me wrong? Totally mad. They're walking away from their history. Absolutely. Now let me tell you something, and I want you to tell people this. Up on Stryker, when Llewellyn died, who was guarding these people, and the Normans are afraid to grab this land, they first didn't want it because of the margin. Suddenly they wanted it again. They occupied it. For the next 30 years, the Welsh of that mountain didn't sit down because they'd learned how to grow, grow hay up there for the cattle. It had become an avot. And they weren't going to let these Normans get away with taking it from them. And so they started a fight back. And that fight back took 30 years. And slowly the frontier moved up. You can trace it today. You can trace it, the names are still there. But, and it comes to the fortress where you were having the rally in June and where we put that cross. All across that land, which they were moving up on and fighting for 30 years, there must be dead bodies up there were for you. If that was Azink or Bosworth, or even bring that, there would be one out of the first. Nobody gets a down. Nobody gets a down. Not even quite coming. Take that message off. Don't care about megawatts and windmills and all the rest of it. They're lying, they're lying, they're robbing us, they're getting, they're swapping us the mountains of casino chips in the stock market. But the one thing that sticks in my core is that a 30-year-old battle son. When you go to Mary this year, somebody get up and say, how many of you are here from Swansea and commemorate the Battle of Lucar? And come here every year to commemorate from where well, why aren't you on that mountain stopping these robbers from desecrating it? Because now you're going to see a big windmill plantation of what is a 30-year battle for. That's so annoys me that they're not even interested. And this mealy mouth talk over there, they're walking away from the history. We must do what the Mapuche Indians do. And they say it. If you want to fight for the future, walk back into your past. And we're doing that. So that's all I'm saying now, but I want to gain the fun back to Cymru, who I often criticise, I'm not going to anymore, 
have turned up twice this week to be up front with us. You know, along with Nicholas Gleiss of uh, Rodriguez Jones of the Great Unrest, which was a fantastic statement today himself. <laughs> there have been loads of times in Welsh history when there's just an handful of people. You just gotta keep going on. You just gotta keep fighting. It's as simple as that, you know. And to the left, this Cambro Anglo left we got in Wales. They go on about Glyndwr and the medieval times, I don't even attempt to look at it. I can be very critical of the medieval period. I mean, for much of this period, the age of the bards and how old they are, they were castrating each other and gouging over land. That didn't happen in Glyndwr's period because they were too busy fighting the opposition. But as far as the left is they make a big deal about Sparta, they make a big deal about Zaparata, both for landlords, both for royalty. So let's get real and support Glyndor and his peasant army because the workers of the 19th century did. They named their lodges after Glyndor and they opened pubs and gave their pubs in him because the folk memory was still there. This man did something for us, whether he had it as a, an objective or not, he did something for us. He freed us from 200 to 300 years of slavery to foreign rule and we continue that struggle and we will not give up. No surrender. No surrender. Can't blame you for giving up Don Quixote, there is no reward in Fighting one mess, fighting one mess It's the country that I'm living in Can't stop once you begin Cause the braves are spread real So kind to blow another and narrow mind instead of chasing your tails in one direction. Don Quixote, here's your appetite. I'm gonna teach you where's another lie. Now it's through forgiveness. 
Come.